Hey guys, the Crafty Pilot here, and today we're going to be doing a full flight in the IXCG 737 from Bergen Airport to Endeberg Airport. Today we're going to be flying as Scandinavian 1086, and without further ado, let's jump into the cockpit. So I've started us up in the cold and dark setting. Um, we're using the uh, electric gauges for today. You can choose in the preferences menu, you can use steam gauges, which are kind of cool. Or you can use the electric gauges. So I'm just going to use the electric gauges for today. Um, weights are in pounds. And that's pretty much it for the preferences panel. Not panel. Menu. There's a little... It's, it's kind of hard to find. If you just stick your mouse on one side of the screen, the little thing pops up. So, anyway. None of the doors open. Um, so if you go in the ground services panel, the cargo door doesn't open. And the cabin doors don't open. So, don't expect that. And I'll be pointing out some other bugs to you as well. So you're not surprised when, if you get this plane, some things don't work. So, first thing is we're going to turn the battery on, then guard it. Arm the emergency exit lights, then guard them. And then we're going to connect ground power unit and the ground air supply and we're gonna turn on ground power then we're gonna turn on the position lights and then come over here and set our cruising altitude which today is going to be 34,000 feet So you only want to set the two um, dials in the auto panel, so flight altitude and land altitude. Flight altitude is basically your cruising altitude, and land altitude is obviously, you know, what altitude you're landing at, and you can usually find that from the airport's diagram or from your approach plate if you're using one. So, this one says 110 feet. Set that in right there. And we're gonna leave this. In, we're gonna leave this in ground for now. And the altimeter in Bergen right now is 3000. So we're going to set that there. Window heat can go on. Hydraulic pumps can go on. The circulation fan on. Right pack auto. Isolation valve to open. And turn on the APU bleed, even though it's not running yet. Seatbelt signs can go on. Um, IRSs can align. Next thing we're going to do is head over to the FMC, head to the position init page, and enter our position. So Echo, November, Bravo, Romeo. So you can copy this down here and put it in there. I'm going to head over to route. Um, so the Bergen Airport code should be populate the scratch pads. You can just pop that in origin. And our destination today is Echo 
Golf, Papa Hotel, which is Endeavour, and our flight number is Scandinavian 1086. And I go to route and the departure and arrival page. So we are departing from runway 17 in Bergen. And then our SID is going to be EPOT 1 Charlie. So it's right here. And we head back to route. The first airway is Zulu 107. to Bered, Bravo, Echo, Romeo, Echo, Delta. Oh, sorry, it's Berep. That's with a pop-up at the end. The next airway is Uniform Zulu 107. And then Alpha, Delta, November. And then Uniform Papa, 600. And then Papa, Tango, Hotel. Now... Our arrival into Endeburg, we're going to be on the ILS 06 approach, and our star is going to be the STIR 1 Alpha arrival, and we're not going to be using the approach transition. So head back to route, so we can activate that. Next thing we're going to do is head over to ground services. Our fuel, our plan fuel for today is going to be 14.7 and our zero fuel rate is going to be 99. All right, so I'm going to instantly reload the fuel tanks, but this is of course according to preference. Um, if you choose to use the realistic button, go ahead, it's just going to take a little longer. So to get to the perf init page, we're going to hit on init ref. If you already have perf init up, that means your IRSs have aligned and you're good to go with the perf init. If not, hit index and then go to perf. So our gross weight right now is 113.7. And automatically fills in your center of gravity and your zero fuel weight. Our plan fuel, which is what Simbrief gave us, was 13.2, and then we added in the reserves of 1.5. Cruise altitude for today is flight level 340. And the cruise wind, I'm not sure if this is accurate uh, because it's probably outdated, but hey. Our cruise winds are 013 at 8. That goes in there. And we can execute the perfinite. Head over to N1 limit. The runway here in Bergen is a little short, so I'm going to leave it on takeoff and climb. So we're not derating the takeoff and the climb. Now let's over to the takeoff page. I usually just use what the QRH gives me. But if you want to manually enter them yourselves, you can hit QRH off, and that gets rid of them, and then you can put them back. So these are just suggestions that the FMC makes, and you can just click them in by hitting these three line select keys. So that pretty much concludes our FMC pre-flight programming. Our trim, as it tells us right here, is 3.4. And there was a bug that this plane had earlier where 
the trim just wouldn't work, but I think they fixed it now. Yeah, this is this is what I'm talking about. The FMC says 3.4, but the uh, ground services tab says 3.6. So, I mean, it's not much of a difference, but I think I'm going to leave it more on the 3.6 side of things. So, you can use what the FMC tells you. Go ahead. It's not going to really mess up your flight that much, but if you're looking for a more accurate flight, then I'd go for the I'd go for the trim in the ground services tab. Anyway, let's check how the IRSs are doing. So if you drag this to STS, it should show you how long you have until the IRS is aligned. Right now it's not telling me anything, which is weird. So you should have your FMC showing the takeoff page because um, if you don't have the takeoff page showing on the FMC when you do take off, it will set off a bunch of alarms and that's not good. You'll hear the terrain alarm, countless others. So bottom line, keep the FMC on the takeoff page. Another thing we need to do is set the MCP speed for takeoff. So usually V2 plus 5. So 145 will be in the MCP today. Our initial altitude, let's crank that up to 10,000. As I said before, we'll be climbing up to 10,000 feet, and then 23,000 feet, and then 34,000 feet. So the IRSs take a while. While that's doing that, I think we should start the APU. So just drag that down for a few seconds, and then let go. So the APU EGT should start to rise. So I have a bug that when I arm my speed brakes for takeoff, it um, it doesn't like me. It starts beeping. I think it's the takeoff config warning, but it's loud and annoying, so I just don't arm the speed brake on takeoff. So the APU is started, so we're going to put that on bus by driving these two down. And then we can turn on the one of the forward fuel pumps, um, and that will fuel the APU while it's in use. Now the airlines don't love using the APU because um, they they cost too much money. So. the airlines have stopped using them that much. Um, they'll use ground power for as much as they can and then, dis and then disconnect it right at the last minute. So right now we're just going to disconnect the ground power unit and the ground air supply. I don't know why this hasn't aligned yet, but this has. This is really weird. That one has, and this hasn't. This is really weird. Oh, that map. Hmm. That was me being dumb, for those of you who didn't get that. Um, Alright, so now that our APU is started, 
I think that we're ready for a push and start. So we're going to push back, nose to the right, and we're going to release the brakes. Get rid of that. Alright, first thing we're going to do is turn on all the fuel pumps. Turn on the anti-collision light. And turn off the pack. Make sure um, the packs aren't running when you start the engines. Alright, this all looks pretty good. Alright, let's start number two. So we'll see the N2 spool up. when it gets to about 20, we will add fuel. So the starter is disengaged and this engine will carry on to 20% N1, which is when how you can tell that the engine started um, well. Engage the brakes right here. So now we can start engine number one. Bring it to ground. You can see the N2 spool up. Number one. All right, so number two is almost started. And as I mentioned, we are taking off from runway one seven, um, which is the runway all the way down the end there, you can see it. All right, so number number one has started. So now we can start the after start checklist. So pressurization can go to flight and it'll automatically detect when you're in the air. Yaw damper can go on. Pitot heats can go on. The APU bleed can go off. And the right pack and left pack can go on, go to auto. Taxi light can go on. The generators can go on bus. And the APU can go off. Next thing we're going to do is set auto brakes to RTO. Set our flats to five for takeoff. And we are going to turn on the flight directors. Just wait for the flats to deploy here. Alright, so let's start the taxi. So the brakes can go off. And we sort of rev the engines here.
So this plan is relatively new, it was released about a month ago, and personally I haven't seen some major improvements since I bought it. And by the way, this plane is $75, so if you're into, you know, passenger jets that fly well, and, you know, you're sort of into that, I think this will probably be a good plane for you. If you're really looking to do more general aviation hand flying, um, I, I really wouldn't go through the trouble of buying this plane. There are so many other great options out there. But, yeah, this is a so pretty solid plane. Does really well in the air. It handles really well. Um, I also just want to give a shout out to IXEG for being, you know, one of the first companies to release a 737 for X plane. I know there have been millions like the PMDG that were released on FSX. But. None of them have been released for X-Plane. So there are two 737s that I know that have been released for X-Plane. There's this one, and there's the X737, which is a freeware option. And they... So this is a 737-300, and that's a 737-800. So there's difference in the model of the the physical model of the aircraft, but other than that, it's not much different. Um, this plane has a beautiful autopilot system, and all of it works almost properly. I'm not going to say everything works. The VNAV is a little bit buggy here and there, but they're working on it. So, one of my friends asked me about liveries um, and options as far as this plane goes. So, this plane comes with a bunch of liveries that you choose to download or not. And then there's a little, liver, there's a little livery manager uh, thing that you can click inside of the aircraft folder in the X-Plane folder, and you can download IXEG's liveries from there, or you can download some freeware liveries from xplane.org. So this was a little bit of a odd part, but let's get set up for takeoff. Auto throttle can arm. Engines can go to continuous ignition. Wing lights can go on, strobe lights can go on, runway turn off lights can go on, landing lights can go on. Everything looks like it's in good working order. So let's do it. So, throttles up to 50%, look good, uh, and choke up. Sometimes 
time it does this, I don't know why. There we go. I think this, I think that bug has to do with um, holding the joystick at center position because if it thinks that you're moving the joystick in pretty much any way, shape, or form, it will disconnect the autopilot. So keep that in mind. Flaps two. Zero. All right, let's head over to the likes page. So right now we have about six miles to unput where we're going to make a sharp turn and then another sharp turn. So happy flight plan today. Landing gear can go off, auto brakes can go off, engine ignition switches can go off. And you'll notice the pressurization difference will start to increase as we move up just about 5,000 feet. And at 10,000 feet, we're going to have to disengage all of our landing lights and good stuff like that. And then those, those won't come on again until the end. So we're going to set our barometer standard. It's a little, uh, it's a bit, a little post time when you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to do it 5,000 feet, I believe, in Norway. And most of Scandinavia actually. But I did 6,000. It's not really going to make much of a difference. So, just in case you missed what I did during the takeoff, I'm just going to recap. So, I throttled up the engines to about 50%, and then I went to full. And then, right after I did that, I hit the N1 button, which tells it to go to your N1 limit for takeoff. And then well, I waited for the V1 and V rotate um, little markers on the speed indicator. All right, so now we're just acquiring, the altitude is acquiring at 10,000. You can see the altitude acquire at the top. So, Turn runaway turn off lights off, taxi lights off, landing lights off, wing lights off. Alright, so everything else is going to stay on for the remainder of the flight. So now we can reset our altitude for 23,000. So that's going to continue to climb. So just checking a few altitudes down here. Um, if you want to stick around for the climb up, uh, go right ahead. If not, uh, I'll see you at 23,000 feet. So
shuttle view back here. I mean, the wings look really cool. Alright, so about 16,000 feet. Um, let's start adjusting the lighting here. And they, they put a lot of detail into this cockpit. So, like, these, these buttons have wires under them, which I thought was really cool. This light, it flickers when it turns on, which is awesome. And... The, like I said, the autopilot system's pretty good. Again, minus the VNAV. It's not very um, consistent. Let me just say that. It doesn't really... On, on the climb, it's great. On the climb, it works perfectly. It's on the descent, where it doesn't follow some of the restrictions. And it gets a little, you know, crazy. So... Usually what I'll do is, towards the end of, of the flight, I'll take it into vertical speed mode, pseudo following the restrictions that are on the legs page. You know, maybe looking for, you know, speeds to set, or something that I might not know off my, off my right hand. So, I'll use that, and sometimes, you know, I started using level change, and I really just didn't like it. It wasn't, um, wasn't like a good experience for me because whenever you need to change the speed of the airplane, it levels you, and then it changes your speed, and then you keep, and then you keep descending. So, not so happy with the. VNAV and level change, but everything else works fine. Another thing, if you're using the mouse uh, in this plane, I will note that it's harder to fly than other planes because during takeoff you have to click out of the box, click on N1, and click back in the box, and then when you click out of the box to start the autopilot, the um, you have to get rid of it to start the autopilot, and doing that will decrease your chances of successfully, let me just say, not crashing. So we're just about 23,000 feet. Um, at this point, it is, you know, the climb isn't so steep. So I'm just going to turn off those seatbelt signs and bing the flight attendants to tell them to start their service. And then we're going to set this for a cruising altitude of 34,000 feet. And then we can keep it in VNAV mode again. So you'll notice I still have like minor control over the aircraft, but of course the autopilot is still making the big movements. Um, 
Like if I make any, I make, if I make it any movements too big, it'll disconnect the autopilot essentially. And when you're on final, uh, I've had struggles myself with finding out how to get a key or button to disconnect the autopilot. And I found out that if you go to um, you go to the joystick and equipment page and then you go to keys or button advance if you use the joystick, go to autopilot and then you click on servos toggle and that's your autopilot disconnect button. So with this with the joystick, I find it works well because you have control of it right away. But with the mouse, it's okay. At least it like does something. So right now we're flying over the North Atlantic Ocean at about twenty six and a half. Twenty six. 6,000 feet, and the, so the VNAV is taking control of the airspeed and the vertical speed. So, right now we have the autopilot in control of all the systems, and I think we've accelerated to our cruise speed, which honestly is not is not that fast for a jet airliner, but then again, it's seven thirty seven three hundred. So I love how they make the sun reflect on the ocean, and then like the reflection as you're flying. I, I think it's sort of cool. And the, if you've ever flown in a, in a 737 recently, you'll notice that all of the recent models don't have this, um, this weight. Uh, there's no, the connector to the engine ends like right about here. So the engine, you can draw the HDR rendering, which basically shows you, um, I think it does the APU also, the, um, it like shows you the exhaust coming out the back of the engine, which is pretty cool, but it causes a lot of lag. So if you want a cool render and you don't really care about the lag, then go ahead. Alright, so we're just about at 30.6 thousand feet. Um, we'll be reaching our cruising altitude soon. And at that point, I will say goodbye until the um, top of descent. And then we will be on our way down to Endeavor. And just for any of you who are wondering, um, the, I will do the approach prep with you guys before descent, and I will not touch anything in the cockpit unless I have to, and if I have to, I will tell you. Alright, so just at 32,000 feet. Um, so as you saw when we set it up, we are going for the ILS for runway 06. The course is 062. And I'll set that over here. And the ILS frequency is 108.9. The initial altitude is 4,000, but we don't really need to worry about that yet. 
and then we can hit init ref and it should bring us to the approach ref. We're going to be going in flaps 40 today and our v ref will be 133 knots. You can find the suggestions for that in the approach ref page. So we're going to be flaps 40 at 133 knots. All right, so see it has the ILS 06 in here, so you can find the ILS frequency from here if you would like. I got it from the chart. All right, so we have reached 34,000 feet. And I will not change a thing till when we're back. And at that point, we will be about 10 to 5 miles from top of the center. All right, I will see you at the top of the sentence. Hey guys, so we're back, and we are about 15 miles from the top of the descent, and let's get moving again. So as I've said, nothing changed. Um, I haven't touched a thing, so we're getting the full flight experience. Um, in a few seconds, it'll probably tell me to reset my MTP altitude. Um, which basically means you have to set the MCP to a lower altitude so that the plane doesn't hold its altitude at cruise. <coughs> and any FMC message that you get down here will show up here on the, on the warnings and messages tab here thing. I don't know what to call this, little panel. Anyway, you get warnings whenever something gets to, yeah, there you go. So it says reset MCP altitude. So we go for a lower altitude, let's say 10,000 feet. And in any, any minute, the FMC We'll start the descent through the VNAV. Um, the, oh, galley power on. That, that would have been bad. That is bad. Um, make sure you turn the galley power on. So as you can see, we've come over the English coast, um, Scottish coast, I should say, and we are Almost at the top of the scent. It's coming up right about. Let me try to guess this. Now. Oh, that's pretty good. So I've noticed it sort of does like back and forth. So first it retards the thrust levers. And then the speed drops. And then it gives power to the thrust levers again. And then it goes over, and then they retard them again, and it goes just back and forth. So I, I really don't know what they do, but all I know is it just goes back and forth. I've also noticed it's a bug that three landing gear lights will illuminate red, even when the, um, just, just when the thrust levers retard. These will show up red. But if you're looking for the accurate stuff, um, you look over here at these three um, indicators, they'll tell you what's actually happening. So just about 30,000 feet right now. Um, it says by PTH, we should be at flight level 161, which is about 16,000. Um, the outside of the plane, um, I think, 
X-Plane is pretty nice for a sim. And I know there's FS and various other programs, but I find X-Plane to be the most detailed with its when it comes to scenery. So it sort of looks like we're there's a little turbulence here. So a lot of so this is the descent path right here in the corner. And it's supposedly going to bring us to 16,000 feet when we get the PTH. But what I've noticed it does is it starts holding an altitude for extended periods of time. Which, as you can imagine, is not good. So if that happens, then I will be taking control via vertical speed. So the LNAV is not controlling So we've pretty much entered the general area. So I'm going to put up a 30 mile fix. So Echo, Golf, Papa, Hotel. I'm going to put a zero radial and I'm going to put a 30 mile ring around the airport. So as you can see, we're pretty close um, as we've entered the ring. Um, head back to the legs page. Yeah, so it's telling us we're going to be at PTH at 16,000 feet. Um, again, not exactly sure how true that is, but we'll see. So what what this plane does, what I find that other planes don't do, is it gives you the auto throttle. So it shows you where the auto throttle is and what that's doing, and then it also shows you um, where your throttles are. So, so in this case, right, my throttles are the, so your throttles are always the white ones, and the little gray ones that says, that say AT are the auto throttle, which I think is pretty cool. You can see the green circle, which which is the 30 mile radius around the airport, and the radial that's directly north. All right, so we're just at 21 and 21.5 thousand feet. Um, the pressurization, as I said, is auto, and now the the difference in pressure is becoming closer to zero as we approach ground. So as I said before, um, at 10,000 feet, uh, the all the landing lights and all the landing lights go on. Um, that's the altitude that they say you're supposed to do it at. So when we get there, that is what we're going to do. Right now, the plane has control of its own speed, just at 19,000 feet. So I try to keep it in VNAV as long as I can, but as soon as it does something weird, I just take over in vertical speed. But, you know, let's, let's just, you know, hope that the VNAV carries through for this, because my first video, and I want to see what happens. All right, just about 19,000 feet. Um, the speed brakes, if I need to pull them to flight detect, the 
FM single tummy. It has a little message and it says a little drag require. Basically, that means just bring it down to flight detect. Soon enough, we're going to bring down flaps one, but that's at 230 knots, so we'll do that closer to the approach. Um, this does seem a little bit of a weird flight path, um, although I think the VNAV will hold out. Um, the, so we'll go down to 10,000 feet, then we'll set up for a landing, and then we'll, we'll configure the lights for landing, and then we will continue heading down. I think we should hear the outer alarm. I don't know, I'm not really... If anyone knows how or when these things do their jobs, or why, leave a comment below. So just about 16,000 feet, as it says that we should be at PTH, and then we're heading down to Bryce, where we're supposed to be at 10,800 feet. Okay, so now it's saying drive to fire, so I'm going to bring speed brakes down to flight attempt, and clear that message. So sometimes if the FMC needs major, major drag, I'll pull this down to up, but that doesn't happen so often. So the set, you know, it's not that fast. So, as you can see, um, the ILS is this white dotted line, and that will take us all the way into the airport, um, if it's done right. So we head over to Grice, then Stura, then IVG-12, then IVG-46, and then the runway. So we're just about 13,000 feet, and I don't think we need the speed brakes. So 12.9 thousand. Soon we will acquire at 10,000. Well, it says it says it will be at 10,000 at Bryce. So. I'm going to zoom in to 10 and turn on the weather radar. By the way, this thing has a fully functional weather radar. So boom, if there's any um, rain coming down, which is good. And I don't think there's an icing risk. So let's continue our approach. Alright, so 11.5 thousand. You can see we're catching some of the nav frequencies on the DME. Uh, but obviously, we're not going to follow the DME, we're following the ILS approach. I'm 
with the Ninja Barkle Studio. And then obviously this is going to give me MCP speed. Increase our R speed to 240 and increase our vertical speed. Alright, so we've acquired our altitude to 10,000 feet, and we're about to descend further, so let's get those landing lights on. And the runway turn off lights. We don't need the taxi lights, uh, but we do need the wing lights. Alright, so let's continue our descent down to 4,000, which is our initial altitude on the ILS. Get that seatbelt sign on. I also want to check the altimeters at Endeberg. So our flight path takes us around and then in. So click on Endeberg, it says our altimeter is 3024. So just keep that in mind. So at 5,000, we set that to 3024. Alright, so we're coming close now to our altitude, so I'm going to set this to 230 knots, and it looks like we need some drag, so we're going to go and set the tent. So we've got our speed brakes up for the time being, just because I'll slow down. Alright, so we're just at 8,000 feet. Sorry about this lag, by the way. Um, so we're descending further into Scotland, just about 7,000 feet. And I'm pretty sure we'll see the ILS marker come up here soon. So bring this down to 220.
So, 5,000 feet, the altimeter goes to 3024. And then we'll continue to 4,000 feet, where we will capture the localizer and eventually use the glide slope for runway 6. So our speed is finally slowing down. Um, as you can see, the thrust levers are retarded. They are moved back. As you can see, we have the glide slope. Set our speed to 210. And of course, we'll be reducing our speed periodically throughout the descent. Right now, I'm going to set the altimeter, which is 3024. Set the initial heading. All right, so bring this to one eighty. As soon as it slows down. So we're arming Vorlock so we can capture the localizer. We might as well arm approach mode. all the way up. We're just about five miles from the from the wide slope capture. From sorry, from localizer capture. And then we'll catch the wide slope as well. So as soon as we get below 230 we're going to introduce flaps 1 to slow us down. Alright, flaps 1. Speed to 175. So we captured the localizer and the glide slope. Speed goes on to or excuse me, one second five. Speed brake can go up. Or just down. And we'll go flaps too.
All right, so just about on the live path. So the localizer is going to turn in, and then I'm going to set our speed to 170. So we're slowing down on the speed brake. As you can see, there's a little bit of rain out in the distance. And I think this is going to be a down to minimums approach. So we're going to set the speed to 165. Get up. On the auto brakes, I say auto brakes too. So I'm just going to put the speed brake up so that we get some more control. Um, so it's laps 10. Laps 15. Speed to 160. Speed to one. And our VREF is 133 plus 5 is 137. Plus 25. And speed 140. Flaps 30. As you can see, we are heading into the soup. You can barely see, barely make out the runway lights. And we'll set final approach speed of 137. And we'll wait for flat sport. Speed brakes are armed. I can see the packets, but I can't quite see the runway yet. So as you can tell, I can't see anything. So this
this is a low vis approach we have here. Set my throttle, just let the auto throttle zero. And just wait to come in. Localizer. So we're out of the cloud layer. Our gear is down through the green, speed brake is on, flaps are set, auto brake is armed, and we are ready for approach. But we're on approach. One thousand feet. Um, just try to call out. So for landing, I'm just going to disengage the auto throttle, and then have the throttles in my control, and then take over control from the auto pedal. Basically what I'm scanning right now, my weather radar, you can see down here, is terrain. So the weather radar can see terrain. So I feel like the auto throttle is not moving before landing. So I'm going to take over control from the auto throttle. And I'm just coming in on the final seconds of the flight. Just wait for the call outs to come. And then I'll take control. Take control. Reverse green. Take control. All right, 
to start tracking the flaps. So that was the full flight from Bergen to Enderberg. And if you want to see more of these full flights in the future, please leave a comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching the Crafty Pilot.